Wait, before this video starts, I just gotta say, check out my main channel, the most recent video to understand what's been going on with this channel's post. Because I said I would be posting it, you know, weekly and in terms of the Beyblade X series. So yeah, watch that and I'll get you guys to the video. Hello everybody, my name is Kendo and today we are going on to part 5 of this Beyblade X series. In this video, we'll be learning about the gameplay aspect of Beyblade X. There is one section of this video I didn't know where to fit it in, but it'll be in here just because I feel it's important. We'll be going over how to play in the Beyblade X generation and launcher play. So let's get started, shall we? First, we'll learn how to play in X. Concept is simple. Launch base and win. See? Simple. But it gets slightly more complicated than that. I mean, very slightly. There's a point system implemented into the game. In the last video, we talked about the stadium and the pockets included in it. Those pockets are important to how the point system in X works. There are four ways to earn points and we'll go over them right now starting off with a spin finish. A spin finish is where the opposing bay runs out of spin before you do and it will give you one point. Next is an over finish or a pocket finish. It's when an opponent lands in the over zone pockets highlighted here and it grants you two points. Next is a burst finish. A burst finish is when you burst the opposing opposing base separating their parts. It grants you two points. Lastly is the extreme finish. An extreme finish is when the opponent lands into the extreme zone highlighted here. It grants you three points. There was one more rule that was recently implemented to prevent outrage from players that isn't official I think. This point is used in local tournaments you can attend and it's called an own finish. An own finish is when you self KO into a pocket with no contact and it grants you one point. Those are all of the point systems that you need to know when going into tournaments. When you sign up for your local tournament there might be a little thing that says match type in the description of the tournament hey uh future me here everything i'm about to say moving forward is true but the screenshot i provided is from a tournament that i will be attending and these tournaments are run by volunteers meaning actual bladers themselves you know run these tournaments organizes them get them all set up and stuff like that and i guess I mean maybe sometimes or maybe like this happens a lot i'm not sure like it said on the little format description they're doing three on three on both for uh first and final stage what you're about to hear later like i said is true and it is true but i guess it's different for um for tournaments ran by volunteers i'm not i'm the i don't know but that, that's something that i wanted to point out so it's important to know the tournament to match type to fully prepare yourself to give you the rundown the match type is how you will play in a tournament and each tournament has stages to them first and final stage i'm mentioning this because match types and stages are intertwined let's talk about the first stage first stage is probably half of the event if not two thirds of it because when i go to tournaments i never stay for the final stage unless you know i get to those stages first stage is where all the players compete against each other the tournaments i've been to had a group system to it and it was split into two groups there's a set number of matches each player gets to play and by the end of those set match numbers the top two players of each group are announced and get to move on to the final stage the match types that are allowed for first stage are one-on-one three-on-three and pick three choose one one-on-one is a match type where you use one bay to battle to get points three-on-three is a match type where you use three bays to get points the way this works from my understanding is that you build and pick three bays to go up against your opponent there cannot be repeating parts in your deck you put your bay into the order you want them to be in once you're confident in the order of your bays there's no changing it pick three choose one or p3c1 is a match type where you get to pick three bays and choose one bay to battle with from what i understand from reading the guidebook which will be linked in the description you pick three bays and show them to your opponent after you show them you get to pick one bay to use the battle with the match ends when one player reaches is a certain amount of points. Now we can move on to the final stage. The final stage is where the top two players from each group battle each other. I'm not going to explain the match type for this one because I'm probably going to confuse myself. Even reading it again, I'm still kind of confused. If you want to read up on the match type for the final stage, go to the link in the description like I said. Also, don't forget to read through the guidebook to make sure that you're not confused about anything I said. Or unless you want to get in depth and want to know the specifics, like I said, 
go to the link in the description below get to the link to the guidebook that is all for you know the points the match types and whatnot now we can move on to the launcher section the launcher section is very important since it will make or break your chances of winning a match in this section we'll be talking about ways to grip your launcher and launching techniques before we explain these parts of this section a comment was left on my launchers video that pointed out that i missed the launcher accessory i did miss the launcher accessory and that accessory like he said is the bx09 bay battle pass what he said about the use of the bay battle pass is correct you can use it to add weight to your launcher i didn't really mention it in that video because i didn't think it was worth talking about since the main purpose of that accessory is to access an app that cannot be used outside of japan unless you have a japanese apple id to me i think it's just a glorified paperweight unless you're using it to add weight to your launcher there's really no other use for it at all if you do go through all the hassle of setting up a japanese apple id account finding a japanese address and getting it shipped cross country then congratulations now that i got that out of the way let's talk about ways to grip your launcher Launcher. There are a lot of ways you can grip a launcher and I'll talk about a good amount of them even though like 80% of them are like head cannon names. But let's first go over the methods of holding a regular winder launcher. There are a couple that I can think of at this time. The no grip technique is my personal favorite way to hold a winder since it gives me more control. What I mean by that is I can position and angle the launcher to whatever I please. And you get more variety out of it, I would say, because you're holding it with one hand without an extra tool on the side. You can't put a grip on the launcher, but the downside is that you can't attach the grip vertically compared to string launchers. There's one technique besides holding the winder with a grip normally, and I'll term it the pirate hook. The reason I dub it this name is because when you remove the launcher from your hand, you make a little pirate hook with your index finger. There really isn't that many grip techniques I can think of, but if you have any that you think should be on here, leave it in the comments below. Now we can move on to string launchers, and oh boy, we got some mention. Of course you have your basic techniques like the no grip and the gun grip, but there is another basic grip technique and that's called the sword. Well I think it's more like a dagger since you hold it in one hand. Anyway, there is another variation of the sword that I call the lazy grip. This is the lazy grip. If you're too lazy to remove the grip, you simply position your hand where you think it's the most comfortable closer to the launcher itself. On the screen here, you see that I am using the launcher grip, but not for its intended use. Depending on how you hold the launcher with the grip, there is one more variation of the sword that I call the lonely grip. This is the lonely grip. You can see how I'm just holding the launcher itself, but I'm not touching the grip too much compared to how I did with the lazy grip. The the lonely grip has the same reasoning as the lazy grip. Now we can talk about the gun configuration of the string launcher. Even with the grip on, you can also still use the pirate hook technique on the string launcher. And of course, there is variations of the gun grip that I call the trigger. The reason I named it that is because it's similar to holding a gun or any projectile with your index finger on the trigger. There's another technique I see people use where they put their index and middle finger on top of the launcher like this, and I call it the finger gun. It's self-explanatory just remove the launcher and look a finger gun there are so many other techniques i didn't think of on the fly but these are some of the grip techniques that i'll mention as long as you feel comfortable holding it in the way you do you don't have to limit yourself to the ones i've mentioned we can move on to actual launch techniques launch techniques are another way the bay's performance is affected like with grip techniques there are many ways to launch a bay but I'll limit myself to a few. Let's get some basic launches out of the way. The two most basic launches out there are the flat and the bank launch. A flat launch is when you position your base straight with no sign of tilting it in any angle. A bank launch is when you position your launcher at an angle. Both of these launch techniques also have a sub technique that I will dub a stiff launch. A stiff launch is when the launcher does not move from its original position. Normal bladers will do something that is similar to tossing something when launching their bay. A stiff launch when using a stamina or a defense type, from my test, it gets you to the center quicker than a normal launch variation. This next technique is specific to string launchers and it can concerns the way you pull the string. There are a few ways to pull the string. There's the no flick where you don't flick your wrist at all. The flick pull where you flick your wrist when pulling the string. The forward flick, a flick where you move your hand more forward while flicking your wrist and pulling the string. Finally, there's the upwards pull. It is more commonly used in the gun configuration of the launcher. Only a few, but you can pull the string however you want. I believe that's all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, 
we'll go over additional information that you might need and answer some questions that you might have. So make sure you comment down some questions you have in this video if you have any questions. I will be taking a two week break so I can focus on my main channel video because I've been really pushing that back and working on this. So expect that. But until then, thank you guys for watching this video and have a fantastic day.